the day's finally come. I'm going to take a look at the 5.8 centimeter, not millimeter, uh, F14 um, Nikkor S. This is a lens that I converted a while ago. It's a non-AI lens, so the aperture ring had to be removed and notched out. I made a video on it. I spent a lot of effort in making sure that uh, I would get it right so that metering information would be sent to the camera correctly. And so let's take a closer look at the build quality and the lens because I find it very interesting. I do have the original lens cap, but it's missing one of the pins on the side. Hopefully I can get it to show up kind of decently well. Uh, Nippon Kogutu Tokyo. And there's the inside. Uh, I don't really like the mechanism that it uses to uh, attach to the uh, front filter threads. Oh, and it's, it's broken, maybe? No, that I guess that's just so it can be removed or whatever. Um, and that pin's in there. So, uh, nice to have, but I don't leave it on the lens. Instead, I've got this uh, Quantare, uh, which... Honestly, the lens caps are probably better than the lenses, but taking it off, it definitely does a better job of staying on the lens and preventing stuff from getting in there. And here we've got the lens. Um, I always find these quite interesting, the older Nikkors, uh, the S Auto. You can see that 5.8 centimeters, and this was made, I believe, sometime in the early 60s. Uh, like I've said in the video that I did on the conversion process, there are actually glass uh, air bubbles in the glass elements that can be seen. I tried to take photos of them, but kind of difficult to get them to turn out and hit the focus on them. But just beautiful, beautiful lens. Um, I'm going to take a look at the rear element. And where I did the conversion process, you got to notch out the um, aperture ring. Otherwise, it's going to damage any camera that it's mounted to. The uh, AI follower tab needs to have room. Otherwise, crush that and break your camera. And looking, it goes from uh, 1.4 to f16. I did have... Uh, issues with the aperture ring being pretty tight. The grease in there had dried up and I've replaced it with some helicoid grease. Um, it moves fairly nicely and I don't, oh yeah, it'll show up. You can see the um, the aperture blades. All uh, six of them. Just really nice in my opinion just feels like, I mean, it's a big, heavy chunk of metal. It feels really well made. Um, and I imagine that it's quite easy and straightforward to disassemble. You can see all the little screws in the sides and the, um, you know, aperture ring just screwed off. So it was quite easy to convert. Focus ring still feels good. I didn't have to do anything to it. Um, yeah, maybe a little on the loose side, but still, I mean, just, just a gorgeous lens. Uh, you can generally find them for about uh, $100 on eBay. And one of the things to note is people won't realize that the, the air bubbles in the glass are not a defect. I mean, they're there and they shouldn't affect anything. So they might list it incorrectly, and I would go after auctions this lens came pretty dirty and i was able to clean it up and now i have a physically nice lens um, i wouldn't want to pay like 300 dollars for one uh, the images that it takes are not particularly um, good in my opinion so we'll take a look at those now so here's what I'm talking about for terms of image quality. This is the backstop of a little league field at the local park. I shot this because I figured that the chain link fence would show off any distortion pretty reliably and be able to check other things going on with the lens. I had it on a tripod and aperture 
priority mode. I leveled the camera. I used this for several test shots of, um, there was uh, the Tokina 28 millimeter and the Nikon 28E uh, series lens. And I was just focused exactly on the middle pillar. And I mean, the distortion on this lens is immediately apparent and pretty bad. I mean, the bottom of the pillar doesn't even line up with the top. It is definitely slanted from left to right. You can see it in the top left corner that the, I mean, there's just major distortion going on. The vignetting's not too bad. And if we zoom in, we can see that it's uh, decently sharp the center of the lens. Moving up, uh, you can definitely see that there is some chromatic aberration going on. Uh, definitely, you know, tinted purple. And the tree in the background for the bokeh, you can tell that that is just a swirly mess back there. Probably want to get some better shots of that, uh, the bokeh, but I mean, it's, there's just a lot going against the lens, especially for the price. There's definitely going to be sample variations, but you know, for something to use, it's kind of like going to be a one trick pony kind of deal. If you want that very vintage look or you want to go through a bunch of lenses to get a better sample. So here's the lens top down to F2, noticeably sharper in the center of the image. And it seems like chromatic aberration has gone away but uh, the tree and the it just looks like a squirrely mess really not a fan of uh, that type of bokeh and come over to the edges you know it should be on the same focal plane and you know it's it's soft so no surprise there none of the vin vintage lenses are sharp corner to corner that i've come across and I, it just doesn't bother me generally think that corner to corner sharpness is severely overrated to the detriment of other attributes of the lens but maybe you know this amount is and going to be somewhat sharp and just a blurry distorted round mess going on um, was a windy day and the cloud coverage was moving so yeah, the grass would be blowing around, but even in the top corners, just distortion all over the place. At 2.8, go over to the trash can. So I even feel like there's noticeable softness um, over here compared to this side. The colors look nice. Uh, if we check the center, I mean, things are nice and sharp. Zoomed in one to one. Um, but I just, I do not like the amount of distortion going on. Here's F4, and it's going to be more of the same in the center of the image. Pretty nice and sharp. Um, backgrounds, um, not quite as blurry anymore. So you're getting less of the swirliness, but the edges aren't going to be sharp. I can still notice the distortion all over the place. I'm not sure what... What more there is to say, 5.6, everything's the same, F8, F11, and then F16, there's going to be uh, some diffraction setting in. That's generally what I find. It's when it shows up on my D750, and it's starting to soften up a little bit. So overall, an interesting lens to own from a collectible standpoint. I'm definitely going to say not worth trying to blow through to find a good copy. I think you would be better off buying the uh, Voigtlander 58mm instead and just uh, not having to deal with these issues. I'm sure that the distortion could be worked out in Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever, but I mean, just why put yourself through that? Just buy a lens that will do what you want it to do. So you don't have to waste time on post. Hopefully that was helpful for anyone out there. And as always, thanks for watching.